And now we've got all the metal pieces in one individual piece, so we can go in or set in separate subtools. So we can go ahead and sculpt each one on its own. I'm going to go ahead and sculpt it this piece. A lot of times with ZBrush, when you're doing things like this, once you again make sure you store your morph target. B to pull up your brushes. Uh, T to get all the brushes to start with T, and then D to get dynamic. So B T D will you trim dynamic? Trim dynamic is a great brush. It kind of lets you shave off the edges. It's almost like a, a bevel brush, but it get, it has a real organic quality to it. You can adjust the focal shift of that if you want, and that will give you a little uh, greater control as you're kind of going on sculpting on your details. So I'll uh, usually use Trim Dynamic to get some nice uh, sculpted up edges. It, it has a really like painterly quality to the sculpting here. You just kind of... Use some common sense when you're going, you know, where would this be the most extruded up? Are there, should we do it everywhere? Should we not do it in certain places? Should we zoom in and make it, you know, do a little larger surface noise here? Or should we do smaller surface noise? Or, or sorry, uh, trim dynamics. Should we trim up some stuff a little smaller or larger? Again, it's got that just hand, you know, banged out look to it. This brush wouldn't work really well if we were doing some sort of sci-fi piece. Or, or something that needs to be a little more hard surface, but it works fantastic for this this treasure chest. I, I think this style should should lend itself pretty well to this brush. You'll see as we go on. I, I tend to use uh, the same brushes. I don't use a wide variety of brushes in ZBrush. There is a ton of them. And they've all got their place. M most of the stuff I I create I. I will use a lot of the same brushes. I'll occasionally just try to challenge myself and find different brushes. And you might, you might find uh, yourself doing that. I, Trim Dynamic was just me picking and goofing around with different brushes. So I would definitely say experiment. The other thing too is get rid of that red wax cap at times. You're gonna find you're gonna want to change your shader and just see how it looks on different pieces. We'll go back to the red wax cap for the workflow at least. I don't really recommend showing it off like this uh, on the red wax cap, but it's something you can start with. So now that piece is all trimmed up and, and looking fine. Delete more target, we'll store it again. Let's go ahead and switch brushes. And uh, let's load in a brush. Sometimes you'll have to load those, hit the uh, comma, go to brush, and go to your mallet brushes. And I like this brush called Mallet Fast. And what it'll let you do is kind of follow the shape of the surface noise here. And just go in and bang in some shapes. And I tend to overdo them, something like that. And then use the morph and go back in and back off some of that detail. Uh, one thing you want to do you know, when doing game art is, is overdo it and then pull it back some. You don't ever want to underdo it. Uh, you want to oversell something and then pull back on it. You don't want to, you, you don't want to use baby steps with this. You don't have, uh, you never have time, honestly, to, to do baby steps. So large stuff, you know, fast stuff, overdo it, overdo it, and then back it off. If, if you know, the guys in the, in the boards or your art director or someone says, hey, back off the detail, uh, back off that, you know, that's too much. Uh, that's great. It's better than more, 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 more awesome. You know, it's it's better to less awesome or, you know, that's it's a little over the top. But we're just using, again, that mallet fast brush. And we're just kind of going in here and, and blocking out some stuff real fast. I really like following where the surface noise is, where the, the pits are in the surface noise. I think it's a little tough to just make it up as you go. It doesn't really work that well. And it looks kind of weird, too. So if we switch to our morph brush here, B, and then the M key, and then O to get the morph brush. We can back away some of that detail and just make it blend in a little more. It doesn't look so harsh. Uh, that square alpha on the mallet fast doesn't always look that great. So sometimes you want to switch to a different, you know, different alpha. That's fine. The other thing you can do is just back off some of your detail, like we're doing here. And that's really where the power of the morph brushes comes into play, I, I think, a good deal, so you can back off some of this detail, is that you're able to just go in and overdo something and then pull it back, kind of, you know, pull the reins in some. So delete, store again, you'll see I do that a few times. 
Um, and then I use a brush called Pen A. It's an RGB painting brush, but you turn off RGB and you turn on Z sub, and what it lets you do is kind of add in some scratches, just like that, some sort of, you know, nicks, scratches, all, all that. So you can do some banged in looks, some scratched areas, and it works really uh, nicely, works pretty decent across edges. So I'll just go in and randomly, since we used, uh, we clicked uh, store morph target again, delete, and then store another morph target, we can overdo these scratches and then go back in and pull them back. Because scratches are deepest in the middle. They're not deep at the edges. They're deep in the middle. And so you want those kind of faded in on the edges and then deep in the middle of the scratches. And some of them we're going to want to adjust a little bit anyways. So we'll go back in with the morph brush now. You can see we're pulling back some of that detail. The morph brush when you use when you set it to spray I think really gives you more of, of a randomized look than if you were doing it with drag dots or line or, or you know dots or, or line or something so it's a little more randomized and I, I think it also works a little faster which is nice I, it comes out a little bit faster so I would recommend you use uh, your morph brush to spray wouldn't even be a bad thing to set that to default you know you can zoom in and get some good detail, but it's going to be, you know, when it's baked out, it's going to be here. So that, that looks, uh, you know, it's looking pretty good. We can switch materials and kind of test it out, see how it looks. Our details are, are reading pretty good. Uh, this didn't take a ton of time to get here. You know, we're, we're looking pretty good with this. Click on all our pieces. You can see those edges are going to look pretty nicely once we get the other side sculpted in. And that piece has that nice not completely uh machine created look to it we'll use maybe trim dynamic to just kind of push these edges a little more that's why you want to make it oh you always want to go back in and make sure you see how it vis it's visible you want to get that one that that one where it connects with the wood you don't necessarily have to but i i think it's that attention to detail that's what's going to set you apart is if your pieces have that really really uh, high quality attention to detail you know where all your pieces that everything is just oozing with detail. Uh, that will, as an artist, that will set you apart. A lot of people don't uh, honestly have that attention to detail. So it's extremely important to have that. So now that one metal piece is sculpted up, I think probably what I'm gonna do is do that to the rest of the metal pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that same exact workflow to all the metal pieces. So we don't have a super long video. Let's go ahead and jump ahead and start on the wood pieces.